What's up, freaks in the VIP? Just want to do a quick Sunday check-in with you, just a Sunday mental check-in, just keeping things updated, kind of a weekly roundup, getting rounding up the previous week, getting mentally and physically prepared for this upcoming week, and you see what it says up there in the top in the headline. This is the time to hold the line. That's what I need you to do. That's what everyone around you needs you to do. That's what your friends, your family members, your coworkers, your fellow peak freaks need you to hold the line. Because as you see and as you notice, as we've been saying all along, that this is the long game, the way that this whole situation is going to play out. It is the long game. We need to start thinking the long game, that there is no going back. There's only going forward with a new normal, so you need to hold the line, controlling your your negative thoughts in your head, controlling your reactions to situations, controlling your emotions, hold the line on your emotions. So that's why I just want to do a quick check-in. If you have any questions or need any help with anything, any concerns, put them down there in the comments. We could talk about it right here live. But I want to let you know that there's... Peace time and there's war time. And I want to tell you something about the way we do things in the Marine Corps, which is a little different than other armed services. Other parts of the military, when it's at peace time, they're kind of laid back and kind of going through the motions. If you go onto a Marine Corps base, you'll see, even during peace time, that we are training and operating all the time as if it's the end of the world and we are going to battle tomorrow. We're ready to die. We're ready to be freaking killed off. That's how we're training all the time. And that's the way I need you to think about these situations is always preparing for war. Because if you only start acting and and preparing for war when the war actually comes, you're not going to be prepared for it and you're going to crumble under the pressure. That's why this is the time to refocus. And I want you to hold the line and prepare for war all the time. Like when this stuff calms down, that doesn't mean you go back into your old habits and old just going through the motions and doing the bare minimum. Fuck that. That's that, that's the time to constantly keep pushing forward and doing more and operating as if you're always at war. Just imagine if you thought about that. It's like Black Friday. I talk about this all the time in a, in a lot of business coaching clients that I have. Black Friday, they go and they market and they do all this great stuff and they push hard. They do more than ever. They do more videos and all this other stuff more than ever on Black Friday. And they're like, oh, it was so great. I wish Black Friday would happen all, a little more often. Why not make every Friday Black Friday? Why not make every day a war? Because wh- why can't you operate? That's, that's the way you should be operating all the time, not getting complacent. I don't know if you know the other term, complacency kills. CK, drill that into your head. Complacency kills. You will get overrun by the enemy, whatever the enemy is. And the, I've been saying it this whole time, the invasion is coming, the invasion is here. But if you're always preparing and always ready and training for the invasion to come, then you'll, you'll be not caught off guard and by surprise when the invasion happens. So if you're preparing for disaster and ready for disaster at all times, when disaster strikes and disaster will strike inevitably, as you see, it won't be a disaster when it does strike. So hold the fucking line. That's the main key I want to tell you. How do you do that? It all starts with your wake up, your morning, your morning ritual. And I'm going to go with you step by step, literally what my morning ritual is. And guess what? My morning ritual does not change on the depending on the situations because it's built into place to be dealing with any situation. It's built into place for peacetime, for wartime. That's the way you need to operate when it comes to your habits, your daily ritual, what you're doing, how you're operating. So it's just business as usual and you're not caught off guard because you've already been training for this the entire time. So you're able to mentally, physically, and emotionally deal with this shit when it happens and you don't break down. And yes, physically counts too. You need to train your body. With, that's why we train the way we train at peak. We are training you for these crazy circumstances, these unprecedented times like right now. That's why we train the way we train. So you'll have the energy, the mental focus and acuity and the endurance and durability to last through these long days when you need to. When you need to pull those 24-hour days because shit's just gone sideways and you can't sleep, you, you, can't, you don't have time or the, the luxury to go sleep or whatever. That's what we're training for. That's why we go so overboard with our training and we're so focused and disciplined so that you have that. So let's go. I'm going to go break, with, break it down for you. My entire morning ritual, like literally step by step. And I'll tell you what, this has not changed since shit's gone crazy. 
unless if I'm happen to be teaching a session and that would just be already accounted for because you schedule your priorities a day before. I don't know if you saw over on Instagram today, I put a little picture that Tyson wrote. I got, I got to my work computer, my first, I have one computer over by my, what I call my thinking table. I'll get into that in a second. It's where I do my meditation and reading and studying and stuff. I get there this morning. That's my first, one of my first stops in the morning. And there's a sticky note on that computer that I have at that workstation. And it's from Tyson. It says something like, review your top priority of the day. Wake up Tyson at 5 a.m. Now, this is him wanting to get up at 5 a.m. on a freaking Sunday during a lockdown when there's no school. School is out. He wants me to wake him up at 5 a.m. And then under, under not there, it says pound or hashtag. I still call it a pound. I don't care. I'm old as fuck. It says pound hard work day because he knows that on Sundays, we're going hard. On Sundays, we're going hard. Like literally, we've already done a high intensity training session, done some boxing, done three miles of hills, like running flat ground, high intensity sprints on flat ground, then several hills. And we're going to do some jujitsu training later on tonight. So we go hard on Sunday so that the rest of the week, we're already prepared and primed up for the rest of the week. Because I'll tell you what, the week is going to be hard. You need to prepare for hard shit. The rest of your week, this week coming up is going to be rough, probably rougher than last week. And you need to be ready for that. You cannot crumble under the pressure. You need to hold the line. You need to mentally prepare. Realize that Every day is, is a, the battle and you need to be prepared for war all the time. And let's go back to that morning ritual. So that sticker was on there today. So I'm going to go step by step, really break it down for you because this happens every single morning, seven days a week. So I'll get up right off the bat, whatever, usually go to the bathroom, whatever. You don't need to add that part in, but we'll even get that specific. Right after that, I'll drink some water. You need to get hydrated, get your brain, get water into your brain, into your muscles, hydrated, minimum of 20 ounces of water, and then I'll refill it up so I have another 20 that I'm sipping over the next 20 minutes. With that, I'll grab either a protein shake or a quick protein bar. Not, I don't have time for that for a big meal yet or even hunger for that big meal yet. It's just something to give me a little fuel and some calories in and maybe uh, some Herbalife green tea. Just have a little caffeine. So I'll have that, my water, my protein bar, Herbalife green tea. That gets set up at my first workstation of the day, which is called my thinking table, my thinking corner. I'll sit there right away, put the headphones on, meditate, 10 minutes, minimum of 10 minutes of meditation, focused, guided meditation. I, I don't, not a, never would have thought I ever would have been a meditation person, but if you need to, it's a free app called Headspace and it, it's free and then you could pay for an upgraded one. If the upgraded one is worth it, it's like nine, 10 bucks a month. So many different categories you can go through. It's freaking awesome. So I'll do that for 10 minutes every day, seven days a week, first thing when I wake up. Second that's done, I'll do about 10 to 15 minutes of reading and not business or sales or exercise science reading, which I'll do that stuff later on in the day. The, not, not the skill type reading, more the mindset, the motivational, the self-development, the personal development, the, the ancient philosophy reading, the art of war, the stoic philosophy. I'll do some mindful reading for 10, 15 minutes. From there, I'll finish that off. I'll leave that. That's my thinking station. I'll leave that station, go to my actual desk, which is the workstation. Oh, sorry. After that, I'll do some quick stretches, just a couple quick stretches, some shadow boxing to get some blood flowing, to get the energy level up after that meditation, to get myself to start primed to work. I'll go to my work desk. I'll sit down there. I have my planner, my journal. I'll sit there and journaling. And I'm not going to go through all the steps of the journal because that'll be a whole separate video. Maybe that'll be the next video I'll do. Literally what step-by-step step I put in the journal. But one section of the journal is the top priorities for the day. And that's what Tyson was putting on his thing. He knows I go over my top priorities for the day. So part of the journaling is I'll list those top priorities for the day. Once the journaling is done, now if you notice, I didn't say anything about Instagram or scrolling through Facebook or checking the news, none of that stuff yet. Done with the journaling, which also lists the top priorities for the day, Look, I'll review the schedule, then I'll review my schedule for the day, see what meetings I have, what sessions I have to train, whatever I have like hard on the schedule, fill in slots of what I'm going to be working on and what time blocks of the day for 30 minutes. I'll, that's already usually done for the week in advance, but I'll tweak things if need, needed, depending on any ad, at new meetings that came in or whatever, sales consultations I have to do, whatever I have to add in there, coaching calls, whatever it is, boot camp sessions, tweak the schedule. So now I'm set. So now I know my priorities for the day. I know my top priorities for the day. I know my schedule for the day. It's locked in. 
And during this time, usually my mind will get going. So I'll go to my second book of journaling. It's just a blank book where it's just scratching down ideas. So it'll be another maybe five, 10 minutes of just dumping some thoughts and ideas, writing in there, which usually end up being my social media posts for the day because the content just starts flowing out after all that mindfulness and meditating and reading and personal development and scheduling and planning. It sparks so much creativity. I've been hydrated. I gave myself a little fuel. I got my blood flowing. And this is all before 6 a.m. Because if I get up, I'll normally get up 5 a.m., sometimes 4 a.m., sometimes 3.45. This is all before 6 a.m. This is usually between 5 and 6 a.m. before that. Before that, I'll, then I'll, I'll start getting working on my priorities, hitting those top priorities for the day. And that I'll give a good two to three hours of attacking what are my top priorities today? What are my main, what's the main things I need to work on for that day? And I will attack those and not break those for anything. And you see, I still don't do my workout yet. This is what works for me. I know some, some of you have to you work out at 5 a.m. And you would just reverse engineer this and tweak it to fit your, your lifestyle and your day. But I know for myself, when I get in that hard training session, so once I finish those priorities for the day, then I'll get the, the, the kids will be up by then already, hang out with them, do some stuff with them, do some reading with them, some quick schoolwork, get them set up for their day for now for school because they have their school day. I'll get them set up. They'll have their schedule set, what they're going to do on the computer, when I'm going to teach them some stuff, when I'm going to do some work with them. We'll schedule that because I've already worked that into my schedule later in the day. So by the time I'm done with those top priorities, two hours of real deep, focused, uninterrupted work, now I'm going to start getting ready for my workout. I'm going to start making a pre-workout shake, uh, when, well, sorry, when the kids got up, I would have had a little snack, whatever the little snack was. A, a, a might be an oatmeal or some egg whites or something, a small little light meal I would have had, a second meal of the day. That was when the kids first got up. When I'm kind of hanging out with them, I'll eat with them and, and do that stuff. Hit those hard priorities of the day. When that's done, now I'll start getting ready for the workout. So now I'll get my pre workout ready and I'll get my post workout shakes ready, which I have two different ones, two different shakes that I do post workout. One for right after the workout and one for about 15 minutes after that. So all this is ready now before I do the workout. So now when I go into my training session, I know that I've already done some reading, done some studying, planned my day, hung out with the kids, got my nutrition down. I've been hydrated, cleared my mind, already got a little warm up in the daytime. I've attacked my priorities today. I've gotten the most important things. And those high priority things are usually the hardest things, the things you hate, the things you don't even want to do. Those are the things to get done first. So they're not weighing down on your shoulders all day. Because usually the most important shit is probably the hardest shit to do. Those hard emails you have to write or those meetings you have to have or whatever it is. So that stuff gets done. So by the time I get to my training session, I've already spent time with the kids, got them set up for their day. They know exactly what they're doing. Their day is set. My day is set. I've already gotten by 9, 10 a.m., gotten a shitload of work done. And so my workout usually will be around 9 or 10 a.m., and I give myself two full hours for workout because I take my time stretching and foam rolling. I'll use the green stretch strap. You know, you have the videos there. I could tag you in it if you don't know it. Foam rolling. I'll take my time with that. Do some active dynamic stretches. I'll get rotator cuff stretches with the bands, full body stretches, depending on what the workout is, and then go in hard on the session. And when I'm doing my workout, my own training session, that is one of the most important things on my schedule. And that's on a two hour block on my schedule each day. But that's why I get up so early. That's why I get up at 4 a.m. in the morning, even when I don't have to, working from home. Because I want to have that time where I don't have to be worried about anything. I don't have to check text messages. I don't have to worry about anything because I know I did my due diligence throughout the day already. So now once that I get to that workout time, I'm going to be so focused and I'm going to get so much more bang for my buck. And I'm going to get so much value and, and return on my investment and my time for that workout that I'm gonna get in, get you even in a better shape because I'm not stopping, I'm not checking the phone in between, sending out messages and all this other stuff because I've taken care of that stuff already through in those high high those hours of priority before the workout. So now by the time the workout's done, literally, I could literally, by the time the workout's done, that I, I could call it a day because I've already had a full work day and that's only by like noon, 12.30, when I've already done more than what I think most of the world does in the entire day. But of course, we're freaks and we're not going to stop there. So then it goes back to hitting the checklist, getting back to things or spending the time to do the homeschooling, whatever, helping the kids out with the work they need to do, stuff like that. Training them if they didn't do a workout with me. Some days they'll work out with me a little earlier. Some days I'll, I'll, I'll set my workout for later in the day for when they're done with their schoolwork and we'll work out at 3 p.m. instead of me doing it at 9 or 10 a.m. Depends. 
Usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'll do it earlier. Tuesday, Thursday, I'll do it then later. But then I'll also train the kids on their workouts or I'll do a second workout with them when it's time for them to work out when their schoolwork is done. But I could tell you, I could show you what I'm going to be doing on a next three weeks from now, Wednesday at 2 p.m. I, could, I know exactly what I'll be doing because I, you put those rituals into place and you need to stick to that. You need to hold the line on that and schedule that stuff with forward thinking that it's going to work no matter what comes your way. It's going to serve you and serve your mission and serve your goals no matter what when the, when the wartime comes. So you're, I'm training for wartime even during the peacetime. So when the wartime comes, not much changes. Really, not much doesn't change. Of course, things have to be tweaked and adjusted in the routine. If you have kids at home and you're working from home and things are a little different, but you have so much time on your hands that you don't realize you need to take this time and wrap your hands around it and freaking use it and utilize it and, and embrace it as a, a fucking gift because that's what this time is you have in your hands and use it, use it, make the most of it. Plan your day block in, in half hour blocks. That's the way you need to be thinking about it. And it all starts with your morning rituals. Just imagine like if you can, after the first couple hours, the first one hour being awake, if you're already so focused and so clear, nothing can break you. No matter what comes your way the rest of the day, you're going to be prepared for it mentally, physically, and emotionally. And you're going to be able to attack it. You're going to have the durability. You're going to have the control of your emotions because you've had this as a consistent ritual all the time during peacetime. So when wartime comes, it's business as usual. Fucking bring it on, baby. I'm right here. Let's roll. Let's do it. Let's rock. Let's throw bombs. That's the way you need to think about it. So hold the freaking line. That's where you need to be thinking of it. Get that hard shit done first in your day. Know what your priorities are. Plan your day out. Stick to your morning ritual seven days per week. And in that schedule, let me tell you how that break, do break down the schedule. Of course, you have to think, do your work, your, your, some stuff on work is going to be on a set schedule. If you're working from home now, you might have a different schedule. But anything that's not on a hard schedule, what I do put on a hard schedule is that morning ritual. That just doesn't change no matter what. Those, that first couple hours does not change. What I'm talking about, that, the meditation, the personal development reading, the planning of my day, all that stuff does not change seven days a week. Then after that, I'll put in my workouts. What time am I going to work out? What two-hour block am I going to give myself each day, seven days per week of training? Seven days a week of training. Where am I going to put those, that two-hour block? And I did two, set two hour, more than two hours of training today. It's Sunday. Sundays, I'll do even more because that's I know in my head that most people think on Sunday, all right, this is going to be my day off. I'm going to rest. I'm going to relax. So if I know other people are stepping back, I want to step it up a notch and do even more. So I can't even feel my legs right now. They feel fucking great. They feel awesome. That's the way I want it to be. Like go above and beyond. Push hard. Push forward. Run towards what everyone runs away from. Do the hard shit first. Hold the line. Set up your morning ritual. If you need any help scheduling this stuff or need some ideas, let's hop on the the phone and just talk about it. I will help you out with this. This is what we excel at, have expertise in, in structure and discipline and scheduling, setting things up for your day. Let's talk about it. If you need help with it, put some questions, comments down below, or you can just send me a message on the side. That's it for now. If you need any help with anything, just let me know. You are freaking awesome. No excuses.